When one thinks of baking, one usually thinks of cookies or cakes or breads, but custards too are baked in the oven. Today on Martha Bakes, I'm going to show you how to make three different types of custard desserts. We have a creme caramel with a wonderful caramel topping. We have the creme brulee, which is everybody's favorite dessert. And we have a cherry clafoutis. Clafoutis is a baked custard with fruit in it that slices into wedges. And it's really like a crustless custard pie. Very, very good. Today on Martha Bakes, three custards baked in the oven. I had my first creme brulee at Le Cirque restaurant when it was still in the Mayfair Hotel. And that was about, oh, at least 25 years ago. Really delicious, really creamy with a, with a crunchy top of burnt sugar. I'm gonna show you how to make a creme brulee that's very easy and very delicious. Now for the custard, four cups of heavy cream. And I'm using an organically prepared cream. This is from Ronnie Brook Farm. It's just really rich and gorgeous. And I, I'm always looking for the local dairy. So here, four cups of heavy cream, uh, one vanilla bean split, and then you slit it down with the tip of a knife and you press very hard along the cut to release those millions and millions of little vanilla bean seeds. And then put the entire vanilla bean right in the cream that will infuse nicely. And to the cream, add 3 quarters of a cup of granulated sugar. This is a 3 quarter cup measure. I love this one. So here, bring this to a almost boil, just so little bubbles form all over the surface. And we need 7 egg yolks. And the fresher, the better there. So this will get mixed up a little bit, waiting for the warm cream. And while the cream is heating, I'll show you, I love these oval creme brulees. These are really beautiful. These hold seven ounces of custard, which is a very generous but not overpowering size. And I've placed six of them in a shallow pan because we're going to put a little bit of boiling water and make a bain-marie, a hot water bath for uh, the custards. Now watch your cream carefully. You do not want it to boil over. It's just about ready. What we're going to do now is temper the egg yolks with the boiling cream. So we want just a little bit of cream dropped into the egg yolks. Stir while you're adding. You don't want to curdle the egg yolks. And they will curdle if you add too much too soon. Mm, looks very nice. And there's the vanilla bean. Mm, smells so rich. And now just Strain the custard into a pouring cup. We don't want to waste any of those vanilla bean seeds. They are heavier than the mixture, so they sink to the bottom. You just want to make sure they get into the custard. Try to find nice, plump, rich vanilla beans. Um, the Madagascar ones are excellent. Press the vanilla bean. So you would not want any of this in your custard. It's a little rough here. And that's why you strain. I'm going to try to pour, see if I can do it without spilling. This should make exactly six custards, six creme brulees. And we're going to put this right into the oven and pour the boiling water so it comes about halfway up the mold. So that simulates a nice steam bath for the custards. It helps cook the custards evenly, keeps them tender. OK. 40 minutes, 300 degrees, preheated oven, 
set your timer. Now, after 40 minutes, you can see that the custard is set. Oops, hot. It shakes just a little bit, but it is not wet. Remove each of the ramekins to a rack. They look so great. I love the color. And now these have to be chilled, oh, at least four hours or overnight. And now for the bruleing, the fun part, uh, which means to burn sugar on top of the creme brulee. Just use plain granulated sugar and put a thin but complete coating over the top. The sugar gets applied right before you're gonna to torch it. Otherwise, it might start to melt into the custard itself. Turn on your torch. And then just start melting the sugar and caramelizing it at the same time. And these little torches are available at places like the Home Depot, the hardware stores. This will make a beautiful, glistening, crunchy topping. And that's quite a spectacular creme brulee. Now listen to this. This is what you want to hear. Hear that? That's the crunch. And then when you dig in through that crust, savor it and pick up a little bit of the custard at the same time. Pretty fab. Mm. Everybody will gobble up their creme brulee. I'm clanking away here using my favorite cherry pitter. And when cherries are in season, whether they are sweet Bing cherries like these or the sour Montmorency cherries from my cherry trees, I make clafouti. Clafouti is a custard-like dessert filled with fruit, traditionally cherries, and a little bit of Kirschwasser for flavor. This particular Kirsch is made in France. It originated in Germany, and it's made out of Morello cherries. Uh, which in season are crushed and fermented and made into this strong flavored liqueur. So here you have your cherries all pitted. These are going to go into the baking dish. Clafouti originated in the Limousin region of France, which is below Paris. So your dish is prepared. I'll just put my cherries right here. Okay. Let's make the custard. The custard is one cup of milk. I'm using organic milk as I am in all our custards and one cup of heavy cream. Four large eggs and two large egg yolks. So you can just break these right into the milk. And you can use a large whisk to Beat these in. Save your egg whites. We have a lot of egg whites saved after this show because we have so many egg yolks. And really, the consistency of the clafouti really varies uh, depending on how much flour to cream you use. Uh, it can be rather cake-like or it can be more custard-like. This one is a very nice custardy consistency. And we're going to use vanilla bean. This is going to be put into a hot oven so there's no need to cook the eggs. You're really making almost like a cup custard. My favorite thing when I was a child was the cup custard from Joy of Cooking. So here, scrape out the seeds from the vanilla bean. Add that to your custard. And add a quarter of a cup of sugar. And three tablespoons of flour, which is uh, one tablespoon less than a quarter of a cup. Just add that in gradually. We're going to put this through a sieve so there won't be any lumps. Looks good, and don't forget a pinch of salt. We'll run this through a sieve. And don't forget the Kirschwasser. Three tablespoons. One, two, three. Mmm, it smells so good with the Kirsch. 
So you have a nice smooth custard. You have beautiful cherries. You have a flavorful custard. And there. And now get this, if you can, without spilling, into a 375 degree oven for approximately 45 minutes. That's what a clafoutis looks like. Spectacular. And now just top that with confectioner sugar. Cut it into wedges, warm. And you can serve it with ice cream, with whipped cream, with a big dollop of creme fraiche, or just by itself. Clafouti Limousin. It's a very nice summertime dessert. And now I'd like to show you how to make my creme caramel. This caramel first appeared in my entertaining book in 1982, and it is still probably the best creme caramel. Uh, you start with beautiful Charlotte molds, French tin, and you need a half a cup of sugar, white granulated sugar, in two molds. These molds are just a little bit larger than quart size. And you can buy these at a good kitchen supply store, like uh, JB Prince. And two tablespoons of water into each of the Charlotte molds. I find that these really are the nicest for creme caramel because you have to caramelize the sugar in the mold. Uh, and I'm doing that right now. Dissolving the sugar, so swirling it, not stirring it with any spoon or implement until the sugar is dissolved. And now put on the stove until the sugar starts to really melt. And uh, really you're gonna need a dry cloth. You're never supposed to pick up a hot pan from the oven or from the stove with a damp cloth. The dampness just acts like a wick for the heat and you will get burned through a wet cloth. Always use dry cloths. Okay, so swirling is good. Be careful not to burn yourself. You don't have big handles, but you can see that the sugar is getting clear. If you cover it, once the liquid is clear, you will get your caramel result very quickly. And in a big kettle, I have a lot of water boiling. It's ready. That's going to uh, allow you to create that bain marie in your oven again for these two molds. And I have broken my eggs. We need six large eggs and six large egg yolks. And here we have it right in the bowl. Okay, so this one is done. You can see the color. It's a beautiful golden color and shock it in an ice bath. This will stop the cooking and harden it so that you can pour your custard right on top. So remember, the, what's in the bottom of the pan is actually what's going to be on the top of the custard. And whenever you work with caramel, I suggest you keep a bowl of iced water. If you got any of that on your finger, into the ice water. Oh, and this one looks very good too. Just shock it. Little dark is good. So now we have our two molds ready. And now to make the custard itself, you have to heat the cream, two and a half cups of heavy cream and two and a half cups of milk. And you can, oh, what great cream. There. And two and a half cups of milk. So I have to take this up to five cups. There. So five cups of liquid all together into a heavy bottom steel pan. And again, very similarly to the creme brulee, uh, you're going to heat this with a big plump scraped vanilla bean. Mm, this one's big and fat. Scrape it out. There's your vanilla bean seeds. And put the whole pod in. And bring this to a boil over a flame. So now while the cream and milk come to a boil, uh, mix your eggs. 
and add one cup of granulated sugar. And just keep beating these until the sugar is totally dissolved. And you're gonna temper this mixture with your milk and cream. And that's your custard. And watch your milk and cream. You don't want it to boil over. It makes a mess on your stove. Here it comes. Get it off the stove before it boils over. And now again, tempering, which is adding the very, very hot liquid to your eggs, just to warm those eggs without really curdling them. It's a lovely custard. And now just add all the rest. Mm. Smells so good. So here we have it. As I do with all custards, I strain this liquid because you don't want any impurities in it. You want it to be silken smooth when it is cooked. And half will go in one mold and half will go in the other in your prepared caramelized molds. The caramel is hard. And so now these are going to go directly into your roasting pan. And now place these in the preheated 325 degree oven. So here I'm going to put the whole roasting pan with the two custards right in the oven. Then I pour in my boiling water. Again, creating a bain-marie, bringing the water approximately halfway up the Charlotte molds. 325 degree oven for 45 minutes. So these have come out of the oven. I've let them sit and just get to a little bit closer to room temperature. They're still pretty hot. Take them out and let them cool on a rack, then put them in the refrigerator and let them get chilled through and through before you try to unmold them. And now, as with most unmolded desserts, the moment of truth. Uh, use a very thin spatula like this and go around the outside of your custard, pressing right on the edge. You want to loosen the custard from the Charlotte mold. And then you can dip into very hot water. Oh, you can hear the caramel crackling, hopefully loosening from the pan. Dry it well. Remember, these have been in the refrigerator and they are icy cold. And now you can flip it over, but I can see it's already moving. So what I'm going to do is put this mold on top, center it, and I can see the center. And there's gonna be a lot, I hope, of caramel oozing out. So turn that over like that. I, I heard the magic plop. And I see the magic caramel. And there you have quite a spectacular mold. Creme caramel, enjoy. I will. So here are our custards. We have the creme caramel, and I'll show you how it cuts. Make sure it's chilled before you try to cut it, but it is a nice, firm, but very delicate custard. Mm, so pretty, look at that. That is exactly what you want. Now you can serve that with whipped cream or by itself. I think it's really good just like this. And then the clafouti. Let's see if we can get a nice wedge out of this. Remember there are giant cherries in here, so it might be a little bit hard to get the perfect wedge. Mm, so pretty. So lovely, oh, what a color. 
What a beautiful, beautiful custardy dessert that is. And then of course, the creme brulee. And the secret of a good creme brulee, a very delicate custard and a glassy, crunchy top. Dig in and enjoy the crunch and the tender. Three great custard desserts baked in your oven from Martha Bakes.